Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile are the starter Pokemon of Generation 2, but unlike most starters, they don't gain a second type upon evolution. This makes them both a lot less interesting and competitive, so today we're going to be giving these three lines secondary types and seeing how it would help them in a playthrough of Pokemon Crystal. At the end of the video, I'll also show you how you can play Crystal with these changes yourself. Now we're going to start with the Totodile line, who I believe is most connected to Dark as a secondary type. This is probably the easiest and most obvious choice of the three, so just hold on to see what we've done for Cyndaquil and Chikorita. Totodile's lively energy doesn't give much to suggest its dark typing, but as we move into its evolution's designs, I think it becomes pretty obvious why we chose dark. And that's because both Croconaut and Feraligatr have a very menacing aura. And not only that, but their learn sets also suggest dark to be the best fit. Totodile learns rage, Croconaut gets bite and scary face, and the line can even inherit crunch via breeding. There's also just no other type that feels as fitting. Fighting would seem to fit Croconaut's caveman-inspired design, while Feraligatr seems to look somewhat dragon-like, but both of these types don't really share a cohesion throughout the line. Dark feels most cohesive to the overall family and learn set, plus it even resonates with its Pokedex entry. When it bites with its massive and powerful jaws, it shakes its head and savagely tears its victim up. Yeah, that sounds pretty dark to me. And the great thing about going with dark is that there really isn't much that needs to be changed in terms of learn set. It already gets bite, so to stack on top of this, I think we could give it pursuit upon its evolution to start the theme rolling earlier. As a lower power move, pursuit is also perfect because of its crystal entry, which states, although it has a massive body, its powerful hind legs enable it to move quickly even on the ground. And so from here, the only thing we need to do is give it crunch, which it probably should have had in the first place. These changes give it a 40, 60, and 80 base power move to let its power scale throughout the game. And so just like how the Gen 3 starters gain their secondary typing upon their first evolution, it will be both Feraligatr and Croconaw who get the dark type. And I think these changes should overall make Feraligatr an even fiercer starter than it already was. Now starting out your game, the Faulkner fight would remain unchanged since Totodile doesn't evolve until level 18. But because of that, it also won't be evolved to have a bug weakness against Bugsy. And then outside of having a slightly stronger stab move, the Whitney fight won't be much different either. But this updated Croconaw will really start to shine in the Morty fight. With the now stab bite doing 90 damage, this should give him a huge edge. Chuck's fighting team will, however, become more difficult with that weakness. Jasmine, Bryce, and Claire would then likely be no different. But the benefits don't stop here, because this newly updated version of Totodile would also do much better in the rival fights. It gains a stab super effective move against Silver's Kadabra and Haunter, while also picking up resistances to them and Sneasel. Then, by the time the player gets to Will, they would likely now have Stab Crunch. This would give Feraligator a sweep, as Will wouldn't be able to do anything to fight back. And then the Koga fight wouldn't really see much change, since he has little in the way of bug moves. Feraligator would, of course, then struggle against fighting Bruno. But gaining a dark resistance would, however, be useful for Karen. You resist all dark moves and gain super effective stab over her Gengar. And then, as always, Lance would remain a pretty great matchup for the Croc. Now, given that most of Kanto is super easy, I think the only notable fights we need to look for here would be Blue and Red, where Feraligator would gain a nice matchup to Blue's Alakazam while also walling out Red's Espeon. So despite a few more weaknesses, I think overall this does more good than bad. Mainly because this type combo would just give the Totodile line something to actually stand out. And just to clarify, we've made ROM hacks that add these changes to both base Crystal and Crystal Legacy. So make sure to watch the end if you want to play either yourself. Now, moving on to Cyndaquil, this is a line that I think is more difficult to determine a secondary type for. The main contenders I often see considered are Normal, Electric, and Ground, so I figure it's best to touch on all three. Now, I think Normal is a pretty understandable type for the Typhlosion line. When we see the gross modern day sprites of Typhlosion without the fire, I think it does in fact look quite normal. Which side note, I just hope we can all agree that this is not our Typhlosion. Look, I'm sorry, but Gen 2 to Gen 5 Typhlosion sprite, that is my canon, nothing else exists. And so going off the only Typhlosion sprites that exists, I don't know how normal I feel it really looks. Plus it's also just kind of like the more boring option, so I'd rather not go with it. 
On the other hand, electric is a very exciting type for Typhlosion, but I'm not sure if it really makes sense. The only reason people ever suggest this is because Typhlosion has a Thunder Punch TM learn, but given how many Pokemon learn the punches in Gen 2, this is just not a piece of evidence we can use. And so I actually think Ground is the pick that makes most sense. That's because not only is Jotonian Typhlosion known as the Volcano Pokemon, it also learns Eruption in later generations. And so then when you add on the fact that this is the most interesting, this is the decision we're going with. I should also mention that if you liked the decision-making process for this one, the Chikorita choice will definitely make you happy. But to start things off, Cyndaquil will stay pure fire. We'll go ahead and give it an early mud slap, and its secondary ground typing is going to come on evolution into Quilava. Now, at level 14, this doesn't really have any impact on the first two gyms. The first time we really see this add any benefit is actually against Whitney. With ground secondary, Quilava would now take Miltank's rollout for neutral damage, giving it an additional turn to hold on. More importantly though, Quilava would learn Dig via level up. Seeing as base Quilava learns it via TM, I think the addition of ground type makes for a pretty natural level up move. This is especially nice because Dig would disrupt Miltank's rollouts to give you a pretty reliable matchup. It would also be amazing against the fourth gym leader Morty, who is of course a poison specialist. And while the Chuck fight would be slightly worse now, ground type Quilava becomes an even better answer to Jasmine. Not only does it get four times super effective stab against her Magnum, Mites, but it also is immune to their thunderbolts. Even the price fight isn't too bad, as he ironically doesn't have any water moves. As for the Claire fight, Typhlosion would now be only worse against her Kingdra, but better against her Dragonairs, so I would call that neutral, because that's really the big loss here, is that you gain a four times weakness to water. But considering its added advantages against both the rival and Team Rockets, I think Fire Ground is definitely a net positive. Heading into the Elite Four, the Will fight would remain basically the same, but Ground gives Typhlosion an additional advantage over Koga's Muck. Ground also helps against Bruno's Onyx and Karen's Gengar and Houndoom. Also, against expectations, this new typing would help a little bit in the Lance fight. And that's because a Thunder Punch Typhlosion would no longer be weak to Aerodactyl's Rock Slide. As for the Kanto side of things, it would help against Blue's Arcanine. Plus, getting a free KO on Red's Pikachu is nothing to scoff at. So overall, this is another change that does come with a few noteworthy trade-offs. With a modest 84 attack, Attack, giving Typhlosion stab ground would do a lot to help it out. Plus, defensively, it loses a weakness to rock, while only adding a 4 times weakness to a type it matches bad against anyway. Fire ground is offensively amazing, and Typhlosion's high speed would make it a really fun starter to run. But what about Chikorita? As Gen 2's grass starter, this is a Pokemon that mainly struggles due to unfavorable matchups through Johto. You're weak to Faulkner, Bugsy, Price, Claire, and Koga, can't hit Morty, Jasmine, Will, Karen, and Lance for much, and the only two major Pokemon it has true advantage over are Chuck's Poliwrath and Price's Seal. Chikorita is not bad in a vacuum, it's just that grass types are bad in Johto. And so with this in mind, I don't just want to give Meganium a type that makes sense for it, but also one that actually makes it good. So to start, this means that Poison Grass is obviously off the table. But I also think it means we should scrap any notion of normal grass, despite Meganium learning Body Slam. Now, in a perfect world, I think Fairy type would be both the most logical decision for Meganium, but also probably the type that makes it the best. Unfortunately, Fairy does not exist in Gen 2, so we can't go with that. But going off that, I do feel like Psychic was originally the closest thing to Fairy type. And while Psychic would help it against Morty, Chuck, Bruno, and the many poisons in Gen 2, I think it would actually hurt it more than it helps. Mainly because Grass Psychic has six two times weaknesses and a four times weakness to bug. And so given that Meganium is a slow, bulky screen setter, giving it more weaknesses really only hurt it. And so when you start thinking about Meganium as more of a defensive Pokemon, I think it makes the most sense to give it a more defensive typing. And while Steel is obviously off the table, given that it does resemble a dinosaur, I actually think Dragon is the most compelling, effective, and interesting type to give this line. But to begin, Chikorita's poor start wouldn't change at all. It would pick up Dragon at level 6, since Bayleaf is dinosaur coded, and this doesn't help it against the first three gyms of Flying, Bug, and Normal. But I think it would be around the point of the Morty fight where it would be appropriate for Bayleaf to get its first dragon move in Dragon 
breath. The Jasmine, Chuck, and Price fights don't really change, but Meganium does now get a small opportunity to shine against Claire. Will is unchanged, Koga is unchanged, Bruno and Karen mostly unchanged, and then the Lance, Blue, and Red fight are just slightly improved. So at a glance, this clearly doesn't give Meganium just absolute dominance over any gym leaders, but I think this change leads to a more important consequence, so keep listening. Because the big thing here is that while this line still has four two times weaknesses and one four times weakness, it also gains massive defenses. The existing two times ground resistance is nice, but the four times resistance to electric, grass, and water is insane. It's very rare for a Pokemon to have three four times resistances, and with screens and healing, when put in the hands of a good player, Meganium would actually be crazy. But there really is only one way to know for sure, and I actually now pass this project on to you guys. I've made two ROM hacks for this concept, with the first being for base crystal. For fans of Crystal Legacy, we've also gone ahead and updated the code with these changes. Plus, for sake of convenience, we've also added all three of these starters to be catchable on Route 29 in case you want to try a run with all three. Here's how you play. First, you need to get your hands on a legally acquired copy of Pokemon Crystal and know what revision version you're playing. Again, there's a patch for base crystal and another one of Crystal Legacy. Now, once you've got both files, head to the ROM patching website called ROM Patcher JS, also linked in the description. For whatever hack version you're going to play, you must apply your respective patch to your clean, legal copy of base Pokemon Crystal. And once you've played through, I would love to hear what you think, so please subscribe to come back and leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. The YouTube algorithm is now recommending you watch this video, so click on it and I'll see you later. Peace!